back to another video and today we're going to be going over ufc 301 starring pantoja versus urseg and martinez versus aldo in rio de janeiro and the first fight on the card is a middleweight matchup between paul the bear jew crag versus cow natural baralio i hope i got that right and these are two experienced middleweights near the bottom of the rankings but both trying to move up and paul craig has a very experienced ufc career fighting a ton of guys with in a great grappling background where he's fought guys like former light heavyweight champ jamal hill and ankaliyev who's also a very good fighter and paul craig his best and some would say only talent is his bjj he's amazing at it he snapped jamal hill's arm beat him and had ankle live against the fence so he can look to be the first one to most likely submit Barajo on the ground because he will be coming in as a pretty big underdog here and I think he should play his ground game stick to his game plan and try and see if he can take down the undefeated prospect on the ground and finally get a consistent winning streak whereas Barajo should take his freedom that they may take our lives but they'll never take Oh, Craig is an amazing grappler once again, and he could catch out Brajo in a weird position if he's not careful. So I do like Craig as the underdog here by submission, but Brajo is definitely the favorite for a reason. And the second matchup is two unranked middleweights, but two very explosive and exciting middleweights of Michael Demolidor Pereira versus Ihor Duelist Poetiera. And these are both very hyped up UFC guys where Pereira's been on and off showing huge highs but definitely having some lows in there whereas the younger Potiera kind of gained a lot of hype as a prospect but just hasn't been stringing wins together in the UFC so this could be huge for him and he has to stay very smart because Pereira is going to be doing his Pereira antics he's going to be jumping around flipping around rolling thunders he's going to look to get his hype back and finish the fight early and I could see it happening I like Pereira's odds here because Potiera just really hasn't looked great he's two and three doesn't really have any great wins but this could be a huge upset for him if he can catch Pereira doing something stupid and now we have a light heavyweight bout between the number 10 ranked Anthony Lionheart Smith versus Vitor Ikiao maybe Petrino the number 10 and the number 15 ranked light heavyweights both strikers whereas Petrino is an undefeated and much younger prospect whereas Anthony Smith has been a gatekeeper slash veteran role in the division mostly staying at the bottom of the rankings but having his runs that usually ended in delusion and a lot of brain damage for him so i think he really shouldn't take too much damage play it safe here against an explosive prospect coming off a lot of wins and a four fight run in the ufc and obviously he's going to want to pull off the upset here but i am not a huge fan of his chances against a much younger and more explosive fighter but petrino has to be careful not to attack his family and he needs to protect his own losing his undefeated streak against Smith would probably drop him out of the rankings and would really hurt his career as he can fly up the rankings here with a huge and hopefully early KO win. And now for the co-main event, it is a bantamweight bout between the number 12 ranked American Jonathan Dragon Martinez versus the Brazilian coming out of UFC retirement, Jose Jr. Aldo and obviously Jose is a legend in the UFC one of the best featherweights of all time but he is 37 now against a much younger and hungrier fighter but he can still look to fight like prime Aldo here I feel like Conor McGregor in that fast knockout made people forget how good Jose Aldo really was he was one of the best in the division history that is a fact Conor McGregor fight was iconic but it is a shame what it did to his reputation but I hope that he can go back to his prime form and attack the body, attack Martinez with body shots and quick combos that he won't be ready for and do not get dropped on your UFC return. And it makes sense he is the slight underdog where Jonathan Martinez is on a six fight winning streak he's gonna look to extend to his 10 and three record in the UFC. And I think his leg strikes can be key to beat Aldo. Aldo's gonna be older, he has great checks for leg kicks but I think he's going to be less ready for them and I think his body could get chopped down easily and he might be able to get outstruck by the younger Martinez whereas he probably wouldn't have a chance against a prime Aldo we might be seeing a much older Aldo who's been a boxer the last few years 
And now for the main event, what you maybe have been waiting for. It is the defending flyweight champion and possibly one of the best flyweights ever now because of this insane run, Alexandre the Cannibal Pantoja. And he has been dominating the flyweight division 11 and 3 and beating all the top guys, which pits him against Steve Astroboy Urseg on a crazy run. 3 0 in the UFC, the number 10 ranked fighter, coming off a knockout of Matt Snell early. And hey, he got himself a title shot. I love it. He can fight for his chance here to win the belt, which would be crazy. But Pantoja has, has showed a lot in the flyweight division against his most recent fight with Moreno, showed his determination, but he fights very hard early. The first two to three rounds, I expect Pantoja, and you should expect Pantoja, to win. He's going to fly going into attack mode, and if Ursek can survive the onslaught, he could let Pantoja gas himself out. He does not have that cardio. He's been a champion for a while now, fighting for it, and he still does not have that championship cardio. So Pantoja should look to save his energy. Maybe go for the knockdown on Urseg early, but if you can't get it, don't get frustrated and don't underestimate him. Urseg, a lot of people don't even know who he is, and I think he shouldn't get starstruck here. He might be the number 10 ranked guy, but it could be a huge and fun upset. And I don't hate the money line here. I think Pantoja always gets extremely gassed by the end of the rounds. Urseg's corner might know this. His camp might have been training for this. And we could see a potential up at here. But I like Pantoja striking too much. I think we might even see an early KO from Pantoja. And now going over my past picks to give myself a little bit of credibility and to recap for my returning viewers. My lock of the night from 294 to 300 is 6 and 1. And my main card picks, excluding UFC 300, where I counted every single fight, I did pretty well on 300. So I'm 27, 14, and 1 now. Looking pretty good and hope to get that better here. And now my official picks for the main card on 301 will be starting at the bottom. I'm going with my first underdog of the night, Paul. Craig. I like his grappling a lot. I think it could be similar to an Uncle Live situation where he gets some lucky takedown, maybe not luck, maybe skillful takedown, and somehow gets an easy tap and ends the favorited Barajo. And then moving down to Pereira, I think he'll get an early KO here. Potiera has not lived up to his hype, and Pereira I think is about to start a crazy run and move back up the rankings. And then going over to Anthony Smith versus Petrino, I think Smith is washed, I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of his game at all anymore, and I think it'll be a knockout fairly early, most likely TKO. And then moving up to the co-main event, I'm taking Jose Aldo out of retirement. He might be washed, he might not be in his prime, but I really like his chances. He'll be determined in Rio to win against the American, and maybe he'll retire again. We'll see what happens, but it will be a great fight. And for the main event, I'm taking Pantoja. I think it will be an early KO, but I think it could be likely that if Urseg survives the first two rounds in the onslaught, we could see a huge upset win and see Urseg as champ. And now for the Lucky Punch Award Show, I'm gonna be going over my lock of the night, my punchline of the night, and my punch bowl, which pretty much is my lock, the one I guarantee hopefully will win. And then my punchline is the storyline of the night. And then the punch bowl is gonna be a banger, the most exciting fight of the night. So starting off, my lock of the night is at minus 455 is Bonfim, one of the two brothers from Brazil. And Pichel, I think, is too old. He's just not good enough, and it looks like this will be an easy win for the Brazilian. You want to know how I got these scars? I own this town. <laughs> I own Rio de Janeiro. So for him to say he is the king and I am the joker, if this was a different time, I would invade his favela on horseback and kill anyone that was not fit to walk. But we are in a new time, so I'll whoop his ass in July. And for the punchline of the night, I'm giving it to Jose Aldo starting his UFC comeback. He might have a lot of scars from his previous run in the UFC, thanks a lot Conor McGregor, but I think he'll be back with a vengeance. No, I am your father. 
and the punch bowl of the night, a banger fight, is the main event between Pantoja and Ursag. I think Pantoja is such an exciting flyweight, just like what a lot of people complain about with flyweights, how there's no knockout power and they move so fast. That's what I love about him. He fights so hard that he goes for the KO and he always gasses himself out, which does make for an exciting fight either way, especially against a number 10 ranked guy fighting for the belt. I think he's going to be hungry for that KO and we may even see it early. So that includes my card overview and betting picks for UFC 301, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I did get it up late, I'm sorry I'm dealing with finals right now, but leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down below what you want to see next, what you thought about my picks this video, and subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time.